biggest thing for me though is like put a song like that out and the thing that got kind of weird was once media and social media gets a hold of it you know it's that's my phone buzzing if you heard that it's all right but um you know, they get a hold of it, and then all of a sudden it just, like, kind of takes on, like, this whole different narrative than, than what it was originally supposed to be and what it was actually sp- – it's almost like they try to change the focus of what you're talking about. And it's so weird, you know, and it's almost like you either go out and try to defend yourself every time somebody does that or you just – in our case, it's like, I'm not doing that. I'm going to just go and put out a statement. This is This is the deal. You can see it for that or not, but, you know, trying to make it something it wasn't or – make it into something it's it, it's not supposed to be it's just kind of the world we live in now and then it takes mm-hmm. about two days for that to be on social media and then you know it spreads like wildfire so um not the first time i've had to <laughs> deal with that kind of stuff so i'm kind of kind of used to it at this point but uh i, I just kind of know what you know you just kind of know what you're getting you into. handled it really well man well you have you know, I, it's not, it's like you haven't gone screw them. I don't care. Da da da. You know, I, I feel like you've you've taken uh, which I would expect out of you. Uh, you know, <laughs> a good a good approach, and you've explained yourself real well. And then, you know, people are ne- some people are never going to shut up. They're ne- they're not going to listen. Well, they're not going to get it, and yeah, that's right. fine. It's like you're going to have some people that get. You know, hey, I know exactly what he's saying because I feel the same way. And I think there's a lot of that. And then on the flip side of that, there's going to be you know my. Like the stuff that, and I'm sure you've dealt with this in media too, but it's like anymore, you know, used to, I feel like we would watch the news and, you know, Peter Jennings or whoever, Dan Rather came on and they were giving us the news. We were like, okay, that's facts. That is what's going on right now. And anymore, it's, it doesn't have to be facts. You know, it's just like you, you know, I remember seeing headlines like Jason Aldean releases racist video. And it's like, that is not. <laughs> That is <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> that is your opinion of the, that is not news and that is not factual. That is, uh-huh. couldn't be further from the you know. So you just, but you know, it is what it is, and I, I've learned to just know that, that kind of stuff's going to happen in this yeah. business. You kind of handle it the best way you can, and and uh, but I know there's a lot of people out there that feel the same way as I did and get it, and there's a lot of people that don't. They're never going to get it. I don't care how much we talk about it, but um, you know, I thought the song and the video would start a conversation and like you know i mm-hmm. definitely wasn't you know ignorant to that i mean right. I, I knew that for sure but it, it ended up kind of being way bigger than than you know i thought the conversation was going to get which is kind of important honestly it makes you real to me you were defended by everybody that you wouldn't imagine would defend you necessarily it's well, like all the obvious people that are going to that are going to take a hard left stance here. Not all of them, but ninety percent of them, because I read a lot of stuff because yeah. I was interested, you know. And and uh, and you got a you got a lot of people step up for you that maybe I wouldn't have thought. Would. Yeah, for sure. And I, you know, I think we're at a, a place now where, you know, we've been dealing with cancel culture and all this mm-hmm. stuff. It's like if somebody doesn't like something now, they just try to get this other side against them just to like tear it down. And it's just like, I don't agree with that, man. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't agree with that mindset. I, like, you know, no matter what it is, it's like, you know, I, I said this a while back. It's just like this, that kind of mentality just sends like the wrong message. I think to even our kids, man, it's like, Hey, if you mess up once, that's it, man. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you don't get any more chances and, mm. and that's just a horrible I, I don't i don't agree with that but that's kind of where we are now and i think a lot of people saw that that was trying to happen you know there was a lot of people on this side that were trying mm-hmm. to just make this into something and and make me look like this and it's just like people are like no that's not what's going on here and mm-hmm. and so you know i i do appreciate i tell people at our shows every night it's like man i appreciate you guys seeing the song video for what it was and not you know, letting all this outside noise go and, you know, because it's hard to do nowadays when social media is just like right in your face all the time and kind of uh, being forced down your throat. So, you know, I think people ultimately that wanted to see it saw it for, for what it was, what we were trying to say. They got the message. And if they didn't, I, I don't know that they ever will. So, yeah, is it? I mean, <laughs> you getting to the point. I mean, here we are talking about it, yeah. but do you ever feel like it gets to the point where you're just like, I don't want to talk about that anymore? 
You know, I you, mean, you well, seem to still be be dealing with it. To, well, it's I mean, like, to me, you, you've got great patience. Here yeah, I mean, this. to me, it's so black and white. You know, uh-huh. it's just like it's that's right and that's not. Mm. Like, there's no in between to me. Like, you know, right is right, wrong's wrong. I don't care about where you're from, what color you are, mm. what you do for a living, what kind of car you drive. I don't care about any of that stuff. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we all know what's right and wrong and. When I look at stuff going on in the video, I do try to be open-minded and listen and go, okay, well, this person's acting like this. Why? Now, is that validated? Not to me, you know? So it kind of just, uh, you know, I do, I feel like I try to be open-minded about things, but anymore, man, people are so sensitive about everything, get their feelings hurt about everything. And it's like, man, we, we used to be tougher than that. Like, I don't know what happened, but I agree. It's, uh, it's getting to the point where people are literally... And I know people in our business that are, you know, they wouldn't touch a song like this because they don't want the backlash yeah. or whatever. Um, you know, and that that's you sh- you should have the freedom to be able to go out and, and speak your mind and say your yeah. piece with it, without fear of like losing your job or losing friends or like whatever. Um, you know, because I mean, we have friends that are on the on different sides of the, you know political fence than we're we're on. Mm. Um, you know, it doesn't mean you can't be friends. I mean, even though you have different opinions on things, you know, yeah. but that's kind of where we are. It's like, oh, you think that way and I'm this way. We can't, we're not going to be friends. We can't talk. And that's, I don't know. I just feel like we as a country, as people used to be a little, a little tougher, a little less sensitive about things. Yeah. And, and so I, I do want to talk about uh, you bringing Toby out on stage yeah. in, in Oklahoma City. I mean, there's a guy who's got some common ground with. I was just thinking about him and Natalie and yeah. that whole stuff. You know, you guys <laughs> surely, surely had a grand. Funny over. thing that <laughs> came up the other day. <laughs> but no, it was great, man. Toby, you know, we were in Oklahoma City. Toby came out to the show, and um, you know, been I'd seen him last year at the BMI Awards, and I uh, got to talk to him for a little bit and see him, but. Uh, he came out earlier that day, and actually Brian O'Connell was out there, who you know well, yeah. and uh, came out to visit with, with OC. And so I went up and talked to him, hung out for a while, and it, more like, hey, man, I don't know if you want to do this, but if it's something you would want to do, like, you are more than welcome to mm-hmm. jump up with it. Like, stage is yours. You know, yeah. this is your town, man. So yeah. um, so he did. He came back that night and jumped up on stage with us, and um, – Man, the reaction he got from that crowd was insane. It was so, I don't know, it was so cool for me to see that for him, especially with everything he's gone through the last couple of years. You know, he's he's been in there fighting, and, and I know he wants to get back on the road and play and do his stuff, but he's got to take care of himself. And so yeah. it's, uh, I don't know, it was it was really cool moment for me to have him up there and have the crowd give it to him like they did. And, um you know, went out there and blew the roof off, man. So it was the coolest moment of the whole tour. Good job. And, you know, we toured with Toby. I mean, we'd known him for a long time, and, and we get along great. But um, I think he, because he is, he's a big old boy. And he's, yeah. he's perceived as pretty bulletproof. You know, it's just, I think, over years, certain artists, and he's definitely one of them, um, Sort of like Clint, you know, they kind of had their moment with let the old man in, don't let the old man in. Mm-hmm. And it's, so I think that's, you know, for fans to see somebody, you know, with cancer or whatever, you know, you see somebody you think of as bulletproof, you know, with the just the stuff that most people in the real world, all of us are going to have to yeah. face something at some point for sure. You know, I think it's, uh, everybody's kind of on board with, Wanting to be a part of helping Toby yeah. with his fight, you know? Lots of things. I mean, we all, you know, as <clears throat> I think when you're in the public eye a lot of times, you know, you're, you're perceived as this, you know, larger than life figure a lot of times. And it's like when, it, you know, when it's all, when you step off the stage, like we're all human, we all go through the same things. We all, you know, deal with, you know, unfortunate things like that. And, um, you know, it, it happens to us too, you mm-hmm. know? And, and so it's been, I know that's been a, that's been a hard battle for him to fight for the last couple of years and, and not an easy one by any means. Mm-mm. Um, you know, but he's uh, I always said, man, he's like one of the toughest guys I know. So if there's anybody that can, 
that can uh, kick this thing, it'd be him. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. But but it was good to see him, and um, I know he wants to get back on stage and play. I know he lives for that like the rest of us, mm -hmm. and, and so I just hope uh, you know whatever he's doing, he can he can kind of take care of himself and, and yeah. get back to it. That's great. And, and he did uh, should have been a cowboy. You guys did that kind of did that to, together, I think. Yeah. Didn't you? And I, I played that song a million times in the bars, man. <laughs> I was like, we're going to play that one? I can play that it's in my like sleep. His, Let's I go. Know, it was like his first hit and wrote that all by himself. I mean, what a way to get started. And and I thought it was interesting because you got a song. I want to make sure I get the title right because, um, um, uh, yeah, Let, you, Let Your Boys Be Country, which – I'm sure for you too, you know, one of my favorite songs coming up, Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up to Be Cowboys. Yeah. You know, it's such a great uh it's such a great counterpunch yeah. on the idea. And it almost makes me wonder why why'd we love that song so much? Because we weren't any living any different back then than we are now. But I guess it was it was just kind of a fun uh, slant. Yeah, I think that's a fun song. You know, I think for for me this particular song is you know, my, my son's five years old, um, you know, and, and one of these days, like, he's going to have to, you know, little boys grow into men. And I think for me, it's like I want him to be, you know, a good man. I want him to be respected and, and hardworking and all those things. And, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff they're going to have to deal with that we're we're leaving on their plate right now for when mm -hmm. they get older. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like, man, right now, just let them – let them be innocent. Let them not worry about all this stuff right now. Let them go get dirty and play in the mud and go fish and hunt mm -hmm. and, and do things. Little kids, you know, eat bubble gum off the bottom of a table they found in a restaurant. <laughs> like, whatever it is, let them just do what they do. Let them figure it out on their own and, uh -huh. um, you know, and just don't put too much on their plate right now. And so, to me, that's kind of what the song's about, you know, thinking about him and, you know, him growing up and, and what that looks like. What's Memphis' number one deal right now? Um, what's he into right now? He's all over the place, man. He, uh, so I got him a little bow the other day. Uh -huh. and, and so I'm shocked. Yeah. And so I got, <laughs> <laughs> I got him a little bow and I was out there kind of practicing with him, you know, and I'm like, oh, this thing's probably going to go about 10 feet. Uh -huh. and I launched that thing, man. And it was like, you know, launched it halfway out into the yard. Uh -huh. like, all right. Now I'm just scared he's going to get after his sister with it. You know? <laughs> so I'm like, I got to lock it up so he doesn't go in there and find it, and you know, put a tennis ball on the end of it. Yeah, something, <laughs> something. He'll be chasing her around with it pretty soon. How's Navy doing? What's she into? She's good. She's uh, she is a all girl. She she got a little like this little make toy makeup kit thing, I'm but it's like again real. With yeah, considering her mother. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. So, but it's like real makeup. So she goes in her room and she'll be in her room for like five or 10 minutes and she comes out and she's got makeup like all over her face. But I mean, she's four. So she comes uh -huh. out. I'm like, Hey, it actually doesn't look too bad. I mean, I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen grown women put their makeup on worse, you know? So. <laughs> uh, that's cool. Uh, I, before I let you go, I was just a couple of songs said, uh, landed with me. I guess, I guess the broad stroke on your album is it's it's very Jason, and we've talked about that before. You know, you you've always done a great job of staying creative, but really, you got a lane where it, that you stay in, and it's top to bottom. Listen to the whole thing, you know. I so said that's cool, that's cool, that's cool, and I got to the bottom. I went, you know, these are all kind of Jason songs. It's not like you know you're you you get off into weird land, and you don't really with the females that you do edit with. But those songs are different. I guess yeah. they kind of have to be. Like yeah, I mean, Carrie. you know, I said with this album, you know, it's it's uh, it sounds familiar, but it's lyrically different. Like it's, you know, I think with us, I mean, you're gonna get, you know, a lot of aggressive type, you know, mid tempos and stuff for us on albums. Uh, ballads could kind of go anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be a little bluesier, it could be a little pop. You know, it could be like. I don't really know where those are going to go, but mm -hmm. um, I feel like lyrically, like top to bottom, just from a song standpoint, I feel like this this album has uh, you know, some of the most well written songs that we've had on a on an album. You know, and you know how this goes, mm -hmm. man. It's like you cut ten albums, you go in to do the eleventh one, you feel like, all right, man, we've done all these other things. Like, mm -hmm. Where do we go now to like keep pushing the envelope? And and it's um, it gets kind of tough sometimes because you're just like, man. 
that kind of sounds like what we did two albums ago. And mm-hmm. this sounds like, yeah. You know, so, you know, trying to find that lane of like doing what you do, but, but still trying to make it fresh and new. And uh, it's a little bit of a challenge, but, uh, you know, I love it, man. I love going in the studio and, and started writing more for this album too. And, cool. And so I had some, some of those songs on there. And um, I don't know, just from a well, creative like, standpoint for me, it was a fun, fun record to make. For instance, a song like uh, Rather Watch You. So I'm, I'm like, well, that's that's them, you know. I know yeah. he he loves playing that song for his wife. That's but you well, know, I cut it for her. You know, yeah. it's like we're sitting in Florida at our our house on the beach and sitting there, and you know, by the end of the day, she's got my sweatshirt on, like over. You know, it's like it's <laughs> it's our life to a T. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. But then there's been so many times that I I feel like I had to defend myself for writing some heartache song or some leaving song or some song where i'm i'm totally busted up about whatever and people are like well that's not your life that's that's not you and whatever well no but i I think like on songs like you know i think just as an artist and as a writer you put yourself in in those positions or it's positions you've been in in the past that you've experienced you're like i man you know you hear a title like for example we had one on on you know, a title that I had that we wrote on this album was Hung Over in a Hotel. Mm-hmm. And, um, I like it. Yeah, yeah, and it's just like, yeah, it's not where I'm at now, but it's like, I've been there, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and and actually that song came out of, uh, we had shot the video for Try That in a Small Town. It was like an overnight shoot, and I mm-hmm. was on an early morning flight the next morning. So I'd only slept for probably three or four hours. And uh, my bass player, Tully, called me. He goes, hey, I'm going in to write with Neil Thrasher and David Lee Murphy today, and I have zero ideas going in. Do you uh-huh. have a title? And I felt like crap in the airport. And I said, hung over in an airport? And <laughs> I, said, I said, actually, hung over to a hotel sounds better. And he goes, that's not bad. You got any ideas like for what it is? So I kind of sketched out an idea and mm-hmm. sent it. And then by the time I landed, he's like, this is what we got. And they had kind of written some of it. And, and so we go in and finish it. But... Um, but like, for example, that's how that song came about. It was mm-hmm. just honestly, cause I felt like crap in the airport that morning. And I remember what it was like waking up yeah. feeling like crap in a hotel. Too. No kidding. <laughs> and it's sort of the song. It is more about here's where I can wind up if I don't really, if I don't get it sin, together, you yeah. know, Absolutely. Now, I was thinking about that very thing last night. You know, it's like, Lord, <laughs> I mean, I used to unapologetically come in at one, two o'clock in the morning all the time, you know, just just out rocking or whatever didn't it's just was just a lifestyle here even if you're just songwriting you're out on the town whatever writer's night or whatever late night writers session i know it turns into one or two o'clock in the morning but that's you know i think uh once you start looking at heck i might want to be around for a while i may (laughs) not want to mess this one up (laughs) yeah i may not want to screw this up but yeah you know it's uh but that's the thing. I mean, I think yeah. writing, you can put yourself in those situations that you've been in or mm-hmm. like, you know, whatever it is. And um, it's part of the creative process, I think. Yeah. Been there, don't want to do that. No. Man, I know you got a full day of it. <laughs> oh, you're good. Always fun to see you, man. 